I'm going to get off the screen, but I am going to bring on your first caller of the evening. Uh, Tony wants to talk about her paranormal experiences. Tony, you are on with Kenneth and Dave. Hi, guys. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. What's up? Not much. <laughs> Just sitting here in Ohio. All right. Well, that's we all got to sit somewhere, don't we? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk about paranormal tonight? I mean, yeah. I Whatever mean, you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take us there. What, what happened? What, what, what do you believe in? Why? Okay. Do you, Well, let me ask you. Do you guys know what an empath and a clairvoyant are? An impasse? Empath? Oh, an empath. empath and a clairvoyant. And a clairvoyant. I've, I've, I've heard these terms before. I mean, when I hear empath... I have, I mean, my mind goes somewhere, but it might be most useful if you just tell us, as you use these words, what you're going to be meaning as you use them. A lot of people that um, sense or see paranormal, <clears throat> um, I think a lot of it is a crock, just made up stories, but there is people that are real spiritual um, that for some reason, God gave them the gift of seeing and hearing things that are out of the unnormal um clairvoyant is a type of um i don't, I don't want to say i don't know what the word you'd want to use but we sense things we get dreams um in my case i see things that are going to happen in the future um i sense dead people they talk to me I don't talk about it because people think I am, you know, a, a wacko. So coming on this show is a big step for me. Um, mm -hmm. An empath is somebody who senses people's feelings, um, liars. Um, you can feel bad in people. And you can also, they can project their feelings and you'll feel them. Hmm. So it's, um, hmm. when Ethan said he doesn't, even this stuff and i'm like well i hope kind of hope he knows about some of this stuff <laughs> so so yeah. <clears throat> my first uh, huh so i just as we move forward so yeah, yeah what you just said makes makes sense i I've, I've heard these these types of claims before dave i mean you've heard this kind of thing before right I've heard the yeah I've heard the terms now i i was i've been called an empath and and what mm -hmm. i might what what I I understood that to mean was people who know me feel like that I'm empathetic and and that I that I empathize with people and I and I feel what they feel but I have never attributed that to anything supernatural it's just a personality trait is what my understanding of that is. Yeah, Tony. So I want you to um, understand. A high percent in one. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What? I was just gonna say, there, Tony. There, I, I, I there's <laughs> more to be an impact. Well, yeah, based based on what your explanation, uh, your definition, I I could see that you felt like there was more to that definition than what I've understood. Right. But but I'm not I'm not versed in these paranormal or supernatural ideologies and 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 definitions. So right. I'm gonna I think for our for for the sake of our conversation, it's best for us to go with your definition of things. Absolutely. And Tony, I just wanted to, to preface this because I want you to keep going. That as you were as you were speaking, okay, you you were saying that there are these two different sort of categories of people who have access to information or access to sort of a, even a, 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 a supernatural realm that other people don't have access to, um, and that this is a, a I believe you said a gift given to them by God. Mm. So I want you to know that as, as you're saying these things, my mind as a person who really values like scientific skepticism just starts spinning. Cause I'm going, well, wait a minute. How do we, how do we know that these types of people exist? How do we know what they do or don't have access to? How do we know where they got their, you know, abilities from? How do we know there's a God? So it's just like, it, it's very normal for people to just sort of stack claims on top of each other without even realizing they're doing it. Um, and to speak very matter of factly about the nature of reality. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying this to, to just plant a flag to go as you do this. I just I want to ask you like 
45 questions right out of the, <laughs> the gate before you even keep going. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not a psychic, you know, and a lot of people that have some of the gifts I do, you know, I'm not Teresa, you know, on the show. I, sure. I don't, I'm not that kind of person that walks in and sees dead people. It doesn't happen that way. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. So what so would be an, an example what? of the, you, you were just about to launch into an experience before I started running my mouth. <laughs> do you want me to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Share with us uh, an experience my, that explains what you're talking about or that defines it, if you will. Okay. I have multiple, but I'll give you my very first. Okay. Um, cool. Probably about 30 years ago, um, was down to sleep, sleeping with my one-year-old next to me and woke up and there was a black figure sitting at the end of my bed with a child and just staring at me. And of course, I'm freaking out, wondering, you know, what's going on. And a few nights later, same thing happened, but something was holding me down and I could not move. I felt like I was looking down at myself and I was being held down and felt like I was being violated. And the next morning woke up, I had bruises in my inner thighs. I had bruises on my um, wrist and it looked like somebody took a rope and went up my butt crack all the way up my back. And so, you know, of course I went over to my mom and I'm like, I feel like something happened to me last night and explained to her what happened. And, um, just kind of things like that as my age, as I've progressed and happened, but I've learned to protect myself and control it. I've had, I've been thrown downstairs. Um, I, you know, I, when you're a clairvoyant, um, people who have passed usually not nice people, kind of evil will be attracted to you. So it opens you up to having, you know, like Amityville horror stuff happen to you. So my, my you know, question there's the good is... side where you can talk to people and communicate messages to loved ones. I, so I, I have to ask you this point. You have a question. You, yeah. So you've, you've got, <laughs> um, I, I don't, whenever people tell me things like this, I, I don't, I don't want to invalidate their experience. There's, Sorry, there's no I've question. got a dog fight. <laughs> hey, stop it. It's okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Dogs are priority number one. So the, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to give the impression at all that I'm invalidating your experience. I, I 100% believe you that you had an experience as you're describing, um, this, you know, sensation of not being able to move, of seeing something, of feeling something. I, I believe you. My question to you would be, how do uh -huh. we differentiate between what's imaginary and what's real when we're, when we're talking about these experiences. And by imaginary, I just mean happening inside your brain. It's a good question. Cause I thought the same thing. And when I went over and saw my mom and she looked at all the bruises on me and Mark, we're kind of like, well, how do you explain it? It was hard to explain it away. Sure. You know, and there, you know, that's the one thing, you know, there's a lot of people that are skeptical. I was for years. I denied what was going on. Um, I'm married, been married for 11 years. My husband, I would tell him stories and he literally thought I was crazy. Thought he was going to divorce me. Um, I don't, I don't think I'd you're crazy. Met his dad. No, I don't, he, I don't think you're you crazy. You know, was like. Hey, I think my wife's a little cuckoo. We don't talk about, you know. So he took me to his dad's grave site. Never met his dad. And I sat there and I meditated on his dad's grave site. His dad told me so many family secrets. There's no way I could have known them. When I repeated them to him and then I said, there's a guy talking next to him, which I didn't even know he had an uncle buried next to his dad named Rocky. And when I started spilling the family secrets, he's like, okay, now I believe you. <laughs> so, well, let me um, ask you something, Tony. Um, yeah, let me ask you something. Earlier, earlier, as you were describing these gifts, as you call them, 
you you explained that they were given by God to certain people. Do are you do you identify as a Christian? Are you talking about the God of the Bible? The Christian God? Um, I believe in God, but I do not go to church. Um, the, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but you when you say you believe in God, is that is that the God of the Bible? The, there are so many gods out there, so I try to narrow down the definition of the God that we're talking about. So when you say, I believe in God, um, in your mind, what God is that? Which God? I in your mind. Somebody created us. Okay. In my mind. Somebody, we came from somewhere, somebody created us. And do you believe that God, that creator, is a benevolent being, a loving, benevolent being, as the Bible attempts to describe him? I don't know. Okay. I could honestly not answer that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Because well, that I see the things that I see, I just are hard for me to understand. Um, yeah, that I guess that's I my question to you. Answer. Why would, why would the God, why would that God pick on you like this? Because that doesn't sound like much of a gift. A gift is usually something that we enjoy receiving. Hmm. But when you say you've been given this gift by a God, I'm wondering why that God's pissed off at you. Why would he pick on you and do this to you? I think that life um, is a learning curve. And I think that we have to go through bad things to get to the good. The gift that I have, I can do good with or I can do bad with. And mm -hmm. that's when I'm learning is, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of people who have lost loved ones and just that one message can really heal a person's heart. Yeah. So yeah. it is, you know, I, I have had people that have been sick. My husband's a good example. He had cancer. I knew something was wrong with him. Kept telling him to go to the doctors and sure as you know what he, he had cancer. Sure as hell. So, so in your um, view, in your view, this the God has chosen you and given you this gift to help people. But with that comes some pain and some suffering is, is how you would view it. Am I correct? Yeah. OK. We have to learn OK. Pain. This, yeah. is, this is an interesting thing because other people. Pain. I'm interested yeah. in how I'm interested in how you're arriving at conclusions in, in terms of like statements that you're making so you, a minute ago you said something that we could we could evaluate the claim uh and it has nothing to do with anything supernatural you said that you have to get through bad things to get to good things i i don't know if that's true yeah um how would how would we go about evaluating a claim like that to see if it if it holds up well this is a good example you say you meet a girl Okay. And you really like her. And she cheats on you. Okay. It broke your heart, didn't it? Sure. So that heartbreak made you more aware of what you're looking for when you go to the next girl you meet. So we mm. all have to go through some type of pain to grow as a person to understand our life and how it's going to be directed. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, I guess, how do you know this is not something, how do you know this is not a gift that Satan gave you? I would like to think it's not. Well, I, I, yeah, we all would like to think some things, but I think the point that, that Kenneth was making is that you've, you've made some pretty bold assumptions as to what this is and kind of landed on some stuff and declare that this is what this is and this is where it came from and this is what it's for. And Kenneth and I come from the from a skeptic viewpoint where we need evidence, we need to be shown, we need we need you know something besides a claim that someone has that that they see and hear things cuz I got to be honest with you Tony, I've I've talked to quite a few people who who claim to have had these experiences and and there's never any evidence. There's always it's always anecdotal, an experience that was had. There's never any video. There's never any pictures. There's you know, and the video pictures that I have seen have been shadowy figures or something in the background and a very fuzzy video moving. And and it's just with the cameras that we all have in our pockets nowadays, I would think there would be some better evidence for these kinds of experiences that are paranormal or supernatural. 
that's the part that continually puzzles me when we talk about these things. Yeah. And even if there was really good evidence, I honestly, even if, even if we had someone said I like that they're a psychic actually, and say, say we had someone who was a psychic go on television in high definition and say, I'm going to pick the, the Powerball numbers. And they did that, you know, four weeks in a row. That wouldn't tell us anything about how they were able to do it. it I mean, it, we wouldn't even be able to rule out just like a lucky guess. It would be highly improbable that they would just lucky guess the Powerball numbers a month in a row. But is that more or less probable than them getting messages from uh, from like a god or from spirits or something? And how would we go about even evaluating that? The probability of, of the different claims. I honestly don't think you can. I think that you would have to experience it yourself. Mm. There, you, I could sit here and tell you I'm, you know, Bill Gates' girlfriend. Okay, well, sure. is it possible? You know what I mean? But you would want to see it for that, you know. And I think that when it comes to the, you know, to the spirit world, bad things, um, you want to see it for yourself. Yeah, My husband's like- a skeptic. He wanted to you know and i totally get where you guys are coming from um i just feel like we would would need to establish we we would need to establish that a spirit world even existed before we could go about you know evaluating claims to have contact with such a thing right you know tony why do you think there's no go on why do you think there's no video video i'm sorry go ahead i think you guys need to I think you guys need to go on a ghost adventure in a um, haunted graveyard. I've done it. I've, I've, I, yeah, I've done the haunted but, house thing. I, 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 yeah, I've, I've, I've done it. <laughs> like I, where I grew up was in San Diego, and, and there were a couple different haunted tour things that I went on. I went out to, I, I mean, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've done the stuff. I, I just like when I when I hear psychics I'm talking. From San Diego. You're from San Diego. I grew up in Chula Vista, so you know, been to the Whaley house, been up to the Point Loma lighthouse and done the tours and stuff. So if you're from San Diego, you, you know where I'm talking about. So the, the old yeah, town, there, you know, there's nothing going on there. Well, I mean, if there is, yeah, I went to so, all that. I just, I, what I'm wondering is I didn't see anything. when I hear people talk about ha- being able to have contact with the spirit world and we don't even know that a spirit world is like a real thing. It, it, it would be like if somebody was talking to me about like what flavor of ice cream their unicorn likes. And before I could even begin to evaluate the claim about the ice cream, I'd have to be like, wait a minute, you have a unicorn? Like mm-hmm. I, like, how do we, <laughs> I would, so it's, it's, you know, there's. I mean, like, I want to see a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's why I'm calling in. It's, um, it's not something that's hard to prove. It's, um, it's wait a minute. You said I it's mean, not I've something had, that's hard to prove. I said it's something that is hard to prove. Is it, yes, yeah, yes, unless yes. you yes. actually physically see it's well, hard to take pictures next time. Do like some UFO, video, I, Br- bring it, bring pictures, bring know. evidence. Do you understand why it's frustrating to me or confusing to me? Why, in this world of, of, of cell phone cameras that we all have. Right, right beside us all the time. Why is it that we don't have anyone that's snapping pictures or taking videos of these experiences if they're really happening? Why do you think that is? I think people Tony? do. But I think a lot of people do, but it's really easy to discount um, a speck in the air, or you know, it's really easy to make an orb with the camera. Sure. The lining's just right, and you just have to dust, and you're going to get an orb. That's that's why that's why I would think it would be more compelling than some weird lighting or some foggy little shadow in the background of a of a grainy video, like it was done in 1940. Well, and- I, I just don't I don't get it. I, I just I just don't get it. As far as I know, every single time these <clears throat> these like claims or photos or recordings are are investigated and tested, they they always come up short. But when you always. So when you talk about personal experience, is it is it possible that somebody out there is having personal experiences where they are interacting with a spirit world? I don't know. Maybe I don't know how we would test that. Um, if when we talk about personal experiences, like you reminded me of, there was a guy one time, a, a Christian I was talking to, who. I, you know, I, I, I asked him, you know, a line that I've heard other 
atheists use over the years of if, if a like a Damascus Road experience is good enough for Paul, why isn't it good enough for me? Why doesn't God just show himself to me? And the guy, he put me on my heels by asking me, well, if you did have like an experience where you had like something appear to you and speak to you, what would, what would you do? And I was like, I'd, I'd probably go get a CAT scan like right away. I'd want to know if there was some, something wrong with me. <laughs> and, and he was like, that, that like killed the conversation because he was like, well, you're the most skeptical person I've ever heard of. You're ridiculous. And I was like, well, but I, I know that people are capable of being wrong of being deluded of seeing mm -hmm. things that aren't there we have you know crack open the dsm and you can you know see all the different ways that that people's brains can convince them of all sorts of things um so with personal experience the fact that somebody has an experience that is enough to convince them doesn't help anybody else yeah you know it's just my experience yeah and yeah yeah it's not one that i like <clears throat> i mean do you think i like up and having somebody tell me oh this person's sick and they're gonna die i mean i predicted my mother-in-law's death last year two and a half years ago and it's like it's not something i like living with i don't like any of those things and you know as for ghost shows and stuff like that i don't watch any of that i don't believe any of it i think it's all fake why do you think because theirs is fake and yours isn't um, because you, you don't catch that stuff on camera. It just doesn't happen. Have you, but I, I, again, I'm going to ask you, Tony, I do you have anything on camera? No, I don't even. Okay. Then why is yours? Why is your experience more valid? Why is your experience more valid than the ones you see on the ghost stories on TV? Why do you discredit theirs? but you that's, give yours credits. No, that's, that's just my perception. I okay, think I gotcha. that it's edited and I think that it's fake. I will, um, hey, if keep I that skepticism. And some, <laughs> then my mind might be different. Mm -hmm. I'm like you, I'm skeptical. Too. I have these things happen and I'm still skeptical about other stuff on TV and stuff like that. I mean, With if I were you, it's easy to make anything. I mean, here's some here's some unsolicited advice. I would I would start to really think about. Okay, you you sit you you get these that you sort of intuit these these things. You get these feelings. You have these predictions that you make that seem to come true. I'm, I'm I'm wondering if you can take some time to ask. Why. How. You know, the sort of these, the, the foundational skeptical questions. Um, also to be aware of that when we're evaluating like causal relationships between things, I mean, we're, human beings are really bad uh, when it comes to like counting the, the hits and forgetting the misses, you know, with their predictions. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it may be the case that you predict things and have sort of a, a, a predisposition like most of us do to remembering when you're successful and forgetting about when you're not. Um, or you could be a legitimate I clairvoyant. I mean, I don't know, but, but the question would be how, how could we evaluate it? How could we test it? And, and to, to really dig into those questions. A, a lot of, I don't get a lot of them. I don't open myself up to it. Um, I have to put myself in a position to be open to it. Um, mm, but that's, that's a way of setting you yourself know, up for what's I, called confirmation had, bias. Well, when Dan's dad told me this date and just kept saying Rita 94, okay, she was going to be 94 last year. So I asked the family, does nine or four, the month nine or four or the year 94 mean anything to anybody in the family and nobody could come up with anything, you know? So I was trying to discredit myself. Right. But that, but by doing that, you've primed them because I so that now, them. now if something ever happens ever where those numbers are significant, mm -hmm. now they can go, Oh, there it is. And that's, this is a way of setting yourself up of <laughs> prime, literally priming yourself for, for, for confirmation bias. I would urge you to look at the work of someone like Daniel Kahneman, um, it, like in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, where he talks about all these different ways that human beings 
can can fall into cognitive traps. Rational, smart people uh, can be susceptible to to fooling themselves. Um, but we've got a bunch more callers. Uh, Tony, you've been an awful great person to, to speak to. Um, yes. Yeah. I hope you call back. Well, I hope the ghosts don't throw you down the stairs anymore or whatever's happening. Cause I, that's, that's not nice. Yeah, I, that's shitty. I would yeah. say, I would say if that's from God, you can say, God, take it I, back. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I went to Maine for a year. Everything bad happened in that house when I left. <laughs> okay. Good for you, Tony. Awesome. Uh, Thanks for the call. But good luck to you guys on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope we talk again. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Cool. Yeah, the thing about throwing down the stairs, that's that sucks. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, could it be sleepwalking? And, and there's a lot of I don't know. There's there's always explanations. There has to be. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, but I, I just I still. Um, yeah, some one of the comments that I'm, they were glad I'm frustrated after all the co interviews I've done on here. He may, he may be uh, being facetious, but I have talked to quite a few on this show. And every one of them says, say the same thing. And there's never any evidence. And Ethan has yeah. even gotten some pictures and videos. And every one of those pictures or videos is just, it's just not, not compelling, <laughs> yeah, not yeah, compelling. Yeah, yeah.